much anticipated part two of section 8.5 on partial fraction decomposition. This is going to be the, um, this is gonna be examples on irreducible quadratics. So we already did linear factors and repeated linear factors. Now, what is an irreducible quadratic? Well, first of all, a quadratic has, you know, a squared to it as its highest power. So irreducible just means that it can't be factored over the real numbers. Of course, here's a much, you know, more saucy, sexy, spicy definition. Um, where this um, determinant, b squared minus 4ac, is less than zero, the partial fraction decomposition is going to have a term that looks like this. So this is just saying, hey, you know what, when you take that square root of b squared minus 4ac, you're going to get an imaginary. Okay, so we get this irreducible quadratic factor right here, okay? Um, notice that prior to this, whenever we factored this with linear or repeated linear factors, my numerator's always been a constant. Um, it's been a constant because it's always a degree less than whatever my denominator degree is. So here, if my denominator has a degree of two, my numerator needs to be linear, meaning a degree of one. So, all right, let's look at one that's gonna have an irreducible quadratic factor or factors in its denominator. This is a proper rational function for my integrand, because you can see the degree of the top is two, and the degree of the bottom is three. Let's factor that denominator. So if I factor out an x from here, I'm gonna get x times the quantity x squared plus four. X is a linear factor. So its partial fraction decomposition is gonna be a constant over the linear factor. The irreducible quadratic, this cannot factor over the real numbers. This one, has its decomposition as a linear, remember it's one degree less than that irreducible quadratic. Don't try to split these, okay? Leave this as one fraction here. So we've got this a over x from the linear factor, just like we did in the last video. And here we've got this irreducible quadratic, its form and partial fraction decomposition is this, you know, ax plus b, but since I already used a, I went bx plus c. So now we have to solve for a, b, and c. Now, we're gonna do this very similar to how we did it with the last examples. I'm gonna multiply through by that least common denominator. So in multiplying by that least common denominator, it's gonna clear up all these fractions for us. On the left-hand side of the equals, I'm just gonna have this numerator over here, my x's will cancel. Over here, the x squared plus fours will cancel. Be really, really careful with parentheses here, all right? Especially with this bx plus c business, you don't wanna accidentally just multiply c times x. It's the whole thing times x. All right, let's start plugging in some numbers for x. So I started with zero because I saw that if I put zero right here, um, it was going to wipe out the bx plus c term. So that gives me, um, let's see, zero, zero, four equals a times four, and then all that's zero. So I just get a equals one. All right, after this, yeah, okay, there's nothing that I can plug into for x that's going to zero out this term. So now we're just kind of pulling numbers out of our butt. So I just chose one and plugged in one for x back into this equation. And I got this. So two times one squared minus one plus four is five. One squared plus four is five. B times one plus C all times one. And I do have A is one, so I get to plug that in. So that gives me five equals five plus b plus c. That gives me b plus c equals zero. All right, that's something. I could work with that. Let's pick another number for x. 
because this is going to be like the last example I did, the last one that I did in the last video. So this time I'm going to pick X is 2. Again, remember from the from you know, such hits as over here that A was 1. So plugging in 2 and then knowing that A was 1, I get this 4B plus 2C equals 2. Now I've got two equations and two variables. So I've got to use that either substitution or elimination. In the last one, I did um, elimination where you multiply one or both equations by a constant so that when you add the equations together, one variable is eliminated. Here, I chose to just use substitution, just to kind of show you one of each. So I got my two equations with my two unknowns. You could have solved this with elimination. Like I said, I just, I'm choosing to do substitution with this one just to show you one of each technique. So here, if I subtract over C, I get that B is equal to negative C. So I'm just substituting that in for B over here. In doing so, that gives me one equation with just one variable. And so that solves for C. And then I can plug back in here that B is equal to negative C. So if C is negative 1, the opposite or negative of negative 1 is positive 1. All right, so that means my original rational function decomposes into a over x, my linear factor, and then bx plus c, c happened to be a negative number, so that's why it's a minus in there, over my irreducible quadratic. So I have to integrate these two now, because my original question asked me to integrate that rational function. Okay, well luckily integrating 1 over x is not a big deal. That's just a natural log. But integrating this, this is challenging. I'm going to take this and just split it up into two fractions the old school way. We don't need partial fraction decomposition for this because we can just break it up into the first term over the denominator and then that second term over the denominator. Alright, so in doing so, we have this, nat this natural log here. This one is a u substitution. This one is number 17 on your formula sheet. It's an, um, what, an uh, arc tangent. An inverse tangent, where a happens to be 2. All right, so we get that natural log, absolute value of x. This one from that u substitution on the uh, flip of this page, and then we get that arc tangent. As you can see, these can get really, really challenging. All right, because the partial fraction decomposition itself is a ton of work. And then when you're done, uh, oh, by the way, you have to integrate this. So these can be extremely challenging. Okay, let's look at another irreducible quadratic. But this one is going to be a repeated irreducible quadratic. So I'm trying to do kind of one of everything so that when these show up, you have an example to go off of for every situation that you encounter. Okay, we do have a, this is a proper rational function. The degree of the top is two, the degree of the bottom is four. This is a repeated irreducible quadratic. So remember that y squared plus one does not factor over the real numbers. How do we handle repeated? Well, we had to do, you know, that thing to the first power and then that thing to the second power. Because it's an irreducible quadratic is why we need this ax plus b business, but in this case my variable is y, so it's ay plus b, and then cy plus d. So because it's an irreducible quadratic, I need a linear factor on the top. Because it's repeated, I need 
this denominator to the first power and this denominator to the second power. So this is like a little combination, like a little love child of um, repeated linear factors and irreducible quadratics. All right, multiply three by that least common denominator to clear up these fractions. And we get something that's not too terrible looking, right? Once we clear up those fractions, it's not that bad looking. If we start with this one, if we start plugging in numbers for y, as we saw in that last example that we did, you know, having to use that substitution or elimination, that got really messy. So I want to offer you a different way of doing these, okay? Rather than starting to plug in for y is 0 and, you know, y is 1, negative 1, things like that. What if we multiply this out using the distributive property? Notice how I'm, notice how I'm going to take all these terms and I'm going to rewrite them in descending order. So I've got my cubed first, then I got my squared. I have two of the y to the first power, so I factored out the y and then I got two constants. Matching that up with this left-hand side and comparing these coefficients, this technique ends up being quicker and easier than picking these numbers for y in this case. So I want you to be able to do all these different techniques, you know, being able to plug in these numbers for x or y, whichever the variable may be, um, to be able to solve those by substitution or elimination, but just also have this technique and say, hey, you know what, it may just be easier if I multiply all this out. Now, what made me multiply this out? I tend to do that if I've got a bunch of terms over here. If I only had like a 1 over here, that wouldn't have been quite as helpful, you know, maybe. But, I don't know, something just kind of spoke to me with this one that, that I was just like, oh, you know what, this one might pair up nicely. And so I did work it out with plugging in numbers for y first, and that was really messy. And I came back and paired these up you know, comparing these coefficients, and it worked out a lot better. So that's why I opted to show you guys this way. So you can see that the coefficient of y cubed, there's not a y cubed, so that coefficient must be 0, so a must be 0. The coefficient of y squared is 1, so b must be 1. The coefficient of y is 2, so this a plus c must be 2. Well, we've already got a is 0, so that's pretty cool, because then that tells me c is 2. And then the constant b plus d must be this constant of 1. I just found b was 1, so I get 1 plus d equals 1, so d is 0. So this idea of comparing these coefficients, you know, this multiplying this whole thing out and then matching up the coefficients might be, you know, a good approach to some of these problems. If you look at this and you're like, wow, I really don't have a lot of things to plug in. This is because in irreducible quadratics, these are not going to zero out um, easily. So you're not going to be able to plug a number in there and get them to zero out easily. So that's why this hasn't come up before, before now. Okay, so now we have A, B, C, and D. All right, cool. So there's my original integral, and I had this A, B, C, D business, right, for my partial fraction decomposition. So plugging in for a, ay plus b, and then cy plus d. This zero boop, makes this integral 1 over y squared plus 1, and this integral 2y over y squared plus 1. So if I break those two apart into two separate integrals, this one's an arctangent. 
This one's a U substitution. Okay. So if I let U be that Y squared plus one, du is 2y, that's pretty awesome because it's already up there. So we just end up having to integrate 1 over y squared or just, um, or sorry, 1 over u squared or just u to the negative 2. That's just a power rule. And there's my final integral there. Okay, so one more example that I wanted to do, and that is one where it's not obvious that you're going to need partial fraction decomposition. So if we look at this trig integral, it may not be obvious from the beginning here that this is a partial fraction decomposition. Maybe you try some substitutions, maybe you try some trig identity, see if you can maybe simplify this a little bit. If I make a u substitution of tangent, and I picked tangent because I knew that the derivative was, c, or was secant squared. Look at what this ends up being. When I make that u substitution, I get one over u times u minus one. Hmm. That, my friends, are two linear factors. So let's decompose that. So if we use partial fraction decomposition, the very first type that we talked about of just linear factors, that'll be A over the first linear factor and B over the second linear factor. Multiplying through by that least common denominator to clean this up. Look at how pretty that is, especially after seeing all those irreducible quadratics or repeated irreducible quadratics. So pretty. We're just gonna pick U as one and U as zero. So if I pick u as 0, I get a nice little a is negative 1. If I pick u being 1, I get a nice little b equals 1. So my original back here, not the tangent and the secant one yet, but this integral, this 1 over u, u minus 1 business, will decompose into these two. These two are so much nicer to integrate. Just some natural log business. Now, you may feel like, oh, I'm done. But remember, I made a u substitution up here. Oh yeah, remember I started with trig. I should end with trig. So I get that u is tangent that I have to substitute back in for u. So this was one that I, that, that was kind of sneaky that I wanted to, um, to do an example of to show you that some of these may not obviously be a partial fraction decomposition. They may just kind of be all sneaky and stuff. Okay, so that finishes up um, section 8.5.